Hey, this is episode nine, I believe, of Living in the Mitten. It's my story of me and my family building our pole barn house in Grand Ledge, Michigan. And it's kind of like a diary of what takes place, what we accomplish, and seeing the goodness of God working in us, through us, and around us as we try to go after this goal to see new chapters and new adventures in our lives. So this week, it was closed cell spray foam and bad insulation. You can see on this side, we have closed cell spray foam about five and a half inches. And I will tell you, Mid-Michigan Spray Foam did a good job of doing what they said they're going to do. And then if not more, if it was needed to get that two inches or that five and a half inches, at least, they went above and beyond that in many spots to get that cleared value that they said they were going to get. So they did an awesome job. So over here, we only had seven inches and then they filled it with closed cell spray foam at about five and a half inches. Over here, we had 12 inches, so we had them do two inches of closed cell spray foam, and then I'm gonna put a bad insulation in there of a R30, so that'll be an R44. And then the walls going around, we have two inches of closed cell spray foam, and then I put bad insulation of R19. Now, I'll be honest, there was not room for an R19 in a lot of it. Um, you have a six by six and you have a two by four, once you had two inches of closed cell spray foam and them to have that at least value, um, there was a lot more filled up in there. So I probably could have went with an R15, um, probably an R even 13, but it was cheaper for an R19 than an R15. And I wanted to get the best value I could. And I had the finances to do it. So I just went ahead and put an R19 in there. Now, did I get the full value of that everywhere? Probably not. But where I didn't get it, at least I have it in closed cell spray foam. So... You know, it is what it is. I think it turned out good. And I'm sure this house will be super well insulated. Um, we completely sealed it up. There is no vents or anything. It's completely sealed up. We are going to install an HRV system, I believe is what it's called, to kind of get some heat exchange or air exchange, excuse me, going on in here as well. So that's what we have going on. I'm going to just show you just a little bit. You won't be able to tell a ton. You know, so there's the wall with the bad insulation. Um... And there might be too dark. And if we flip the camera around and go to this side, you can see the bat insulation. And then what they did for the five and a half inches of closed cell spray foam. So things are going good. Um, I'm thankful for the progress we're making later in this week. We're going to get some drywall and we're going to start that and see how that works out. I was a little bummed that they didn't have 53 inch um, drywall. So I had to go by four by eights and uh, this is going to be just a little bit more work. So I was kind of bummed about that, but you know, everything will work out for good. I'm just going to continually trust God. Um, I did also want to state a fact about me believing this to be a, debt-free house. And I don't want to misguide people or mislead people that, hey, you build a pole barn, it's going to be cheaper and you're going to be able to accomplish it. And it's not going to be any problems. Um, right now, I would say I'm not going to be able to accomplish this house debt-free in the natural. So I don't want to paint this picture that, hey, if you build a barn, it's going to be cheaper and you can, you know, do it debt-free. No, I'm trusting God and I'm believing God. It's an act of faith. So right now it's in the natural. It's not going to happen. Um, I'm just going to continually press in, do what I can, and watch God work it out. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to have stress. I'm not going to have fear. But I don't want to mislead people that you build a barn house. It's going to be way, way cheaper than a regular house. Now, me doing a lot of stuff myself does save money, but I'm also getting like closed cell spray foam, which costs more than just bad insulation. I would have saved a lot of money if I would have just went with bad insulation. But I'm still believing this to be our forever home, and I want to see, you know, do the best I can and see it last for quite a while, hopefully. So right now, it is not like, hey, debt-free house. No, I'm believing it in faith. Um, and going to see how God works it out. Um, and even if I have it finished and it's still owe money on it, then I'm going to continually believe it until it is debt-free. And that's my confidence I have in God, that God is for me and he will work things out. And I'm not going to worry, stress, and fear. I'm just going to do the best that I can. Because you got to think of it like this, like, you know, the three guys that got thrown into the fire in the Old Testament, they stood up for what they believed and what they wanted what they were trusting God, that they were going to always pray to God and they weren't going to bow to anybody else. And um, they got thrown in the fire. Now, this is not a fire by any stretch of the imagination. This is a blessing and it's a joy, just like everything. And um, it was probably a, even though, you know, things were against them, it was still probably a blessing and a joy to be able to stand up for God in the midst of the adversity. And they got thrown in the fire. It was a complete act of faith. 
And did they die? No. Jesus was actually there with them and they lived and they came out. When they came out, the whole environment changed from that act of faith. So right now, in a very, very small example of that, you know, I'm believing for a debt-free house. Now, it doesn't mean it's like roses and simple and that it's super capable. No, it doesn't seem super capable. It's a, you're in the fire, you're in the midst of it, of the storm, and you're just trusting God that he'll bring you through to the other side and that you're going to see those things come to manifest in your life. And then it's not all for self, it's for the glory of God. So when I accomplish this debt-free, it's not because I make a ton of money, it's not because I'm super wise, it's because God is faithful, because God is good, because God is for me, because he wants me to have faith and to trust in him and to share his faithfulness with other people and to see good things manifest in my life and their lives and the people of everyone around us. It's definitely not for self. So I don't want to paint a picture that this is completely easy and debt-free. Um, I believe it will be debt-free and God will work through everything, but it's super, not super, super, not um, just a bar now. So it's inexpensive and easy. Um, so let's just throw a number out there. I would say around 160000 Now, some people, 160000 could be a lot of money. And to other people, 160000 could be like peanuts. You know, that's like nothing. But for me, it is an act of faith. It is stretching myself. And it is going after something that in myself is not possible. But I think that's where God always wants us. He always wants us to be a little bit uncomfortable. And then it becomes normal to be uncomfortable because you're always trusting in God. He doesn't want you to be comfortable because if you're comfortable, you don't need God. Eh, what do I need God for? I'm comfortable. Got the money in the bank. Got this, got this. No, he wants us to always be stretching ourselves. So once I get this house accomplished, paid for, debt free, it won't be for me to go sit on my butt and do nothing. You think of people in the Bible when they end up doing that. That's when they sin. That's when they fail. Think of David. You know, that's when he failed. You can read more about that or Noah after the flood. When he got done, he ended up failing. Um, so we always want to be out of our comfort zone to have our faith in God and watch God work through those things. That's kind of what I believe. You know, you could agree, disagree. It's okay. Still want to see good in your life as well. So episode nine of the Debt Free House in Grand Ledge, Michigan, living in the mitten. Have a blessed week, month, day, year, and we'll see you on the flip side.